sub giants fans it's your boy no name i'm back at it with another video hopefully this comes out on wednesday if not y'all probably will be seeing this on sunday um because i have this video in mind right now and i also want to do another video on just how the media views the new york giants i'm gonna leave it at that don't really want to spend too much time on it obviously it was kind of prompted by what they're saying with our choice of uh, Daniel Jones over Dwayne Haskins and whatnot, but it's been in my mind for a long time, just the way the media and the way fans of other teams view the Giants, and I, I don't know. I just want to make a video on it, but I'm, I'm going to try and get this one out first, most obviously because it is more relevant to the topic at hand, which I've been covering for the past couple of days, which is the NFL Draft. And I want to talk about the undrafted rookie free agents that the New York Giants signed since the uh, NFL draft and as of today Tuesday April 30th so now and I say that because uh, yesterday when I checked the list there was like two or three guys on here that weren't here yesterday so I'm like I don't know how long they're gonna sign it for I'm pretty sure there's like a period there's only like a period of time where you could sign some undrafted free agents but then again I'm not too sure um so here's the list right now I'm gonna put it up on the screen I'm gonna run down the list and I'm gonna talk about a couple guys that I really like uh, for all of them though I'm gonna talk about what I think about the pickup so first one on the list is Reggie White Jr. wide receiver out of Monmouth University my bad if I mispronounce the university's name uh, I looked at a couple highlights of this guy he, he seems to be you know he just based off of his highlights, like I said, I didn't do anything too in-depth about these guys. This is just going to be more of like fan talk than analysis, but I looked at the highlights of him. I like him. He has pretty good hands. Um, Looks like he has some good speed to him. I really don't know what I could compare him to. He just looks like an average receiver. I mean, if you're signed as an undrafted free agent, it would obviously the goal is to get somebody, Victor Cruz, like that becomes one of those top NFL guys. Because... Uh, for some fans that don't remember, when Victor Cruz was in his prime, he was considered one of the top wide receivers in the league. So that's the goal, but as of right now, Reggie White just looks like a nice depth player. I mean, adding to the wide receiver core, um, I like it. Uh, the 2017 season really showed that you can never have too many of them because once our starting core went down, uh, I mean, it's like we had nobody else there. We had to sign dudes off the practice squad or whatnot. Next guy on the list is Jacob Fiedman, safety out of Purdue. I like the pickup in terms of adding safety depth because like I said during the um, the day two and three draft video, we were taking a lot of corners and one of one of my theories were we're either going to take one of these guys and convert him to free safety because uh, we know we do have Antoine Bethea. Shout out to my YouTube comment section. You guys have really been putting in some good constructive uh, comments and criticism in there. Uh, we do have Antoine Bethea, but I don't, I mean... Just based off of age alone, and I'm saying based off of age alone because he's still playing at a high level, he's not going to be there for, I, I don't know, I see him at most being on the team for two to three years. We need somebody behind him, a reliable free safety behind him. I kind of I kind of want a ball hawk type guy so that we'd have the box safety in Dribble Peppers and then the guy that could uh, get quarterback scared in that free safety position. So we picked up him. He's a nice, good uh, depth player. Um, my other theory, of course, was in case you guys didn't hear it in that video, um, I think we picked up so many corners because we're probably going to be trading away Janoris Jenkins either before the season starts or halfway through the season. Package him with a couple of picks. Uh, my ideal situation would be to send him to a team that would be willing to part with their right tackle. And obviously that it would have to be a good right tackle. So I mean, th th those are just my two theories. I have no problem with bolstering up the secondary. Next guy is James O'Hannigan, center out of Buffalo. Uh, this was something I actually thought we were going to do in the draft. We only took one offensive lineman in the entire NFL draft, and of course it was George uh, Asafo Ajay out of um, Kentucky in the seventh round. And the more I look at this guy, the more I'm liking him, but I still think he has a lot of work to, to do before he takes over our, our starting right tackle. And I thought we would have went with some type of inside alignment during the draft because other than Spencer Pewley and John Jalapio, I can't really think off the top of my head of some backup guys. I mean, we think the job is going to go to Jalapio because uh, last year he won it. I don't know. Spencer Pewley did a, a pretty good job as our center towards the second half of the season. Maybe he's going to be the backup, but then I was like, we still need somebody behind 
Will Hernandez or we need somebody behind the right guard or we need somebody behind uh, Zeitler because I mean the starting lineup is pretty good right if Jalapia performs as he did in the first two games before he got injured our starting lineup is pretty good we just need a better right tackle that being said our depth is something that needs to be worked on uh, we've seen what happens with this Giants team when we have injuries on the online most notably last season we were lucky to have fine people such as Jalapio, I mean such as Pulley and uh, Jamal Brown last year off of waivers. That doesn't happen all the time. So I like to, I do like to see them building up the line in terms of the guys that are, could come in in case of injury. Then we got Josiah Toefa, linebacker out of UTSA. This is another one of the pickups that I really liked. Um, I, the first off, I saw some film of him during a highlight video of all the Giants undrafted free agents, and he caught my eye. Mostly because this guy, like, it is a highlight video, so of course it would show their best plays. So keep that in mind. But what caught my eye was on almost every play, he knew where the ball was, where the ball was going before the quarterback let go of the ball. Like on running plays, like say it was a play action, or um, play action is a run play. What I'm saying, say it was a uh, some type of read option or some type of uh, fake out that the quarterback was trying to do to throw the defense off. He he like he always knew where the uh, where the running back was going. He sometimes even knows where uh, the quarterback is just going to throw to. He's always in the midst of tackling the ball carrier. So that, you know, just off the bat kind of gives me the impression that either A, he had just has really good nose for the ball. You know, he's just a really good with ball awareness. Or B, he spends a lot of time in the film room, you know, with the teams he's going to play. So he knows their, uh, he just knows the targets and he knows their plays and whatnot. So I don't know, that caught me right off the bat. And then I went and I kind of looked at his stats and... In my opinion, for being an undrafted free agent, he has some really good stats. He he only spent three seasons in college. His freshman year, he won the uh, Conference USA Freshman of the Year award, where he started 12 games, set the school record for 115 tackles with uh, six sacks and one interception. Then, unfortunately, he got knee injury his sophomore year, what only got him seven starts, and in those seven starts, he got 29 tackles and one sack. Then this past year, he had an honorable mention for the All-Conference USA Junior Campaign where he had 113 stops and he led the Roadrunners with 11.5 tackles for loss and 4.5 sacks. So considering that he didn't go drafted at all and he's coming off an injury, I think he's pretty good and his tape kind of shows it too. Next up we got Paul Adams, offensive lineman from Missouri. That is of course the same university that Drew Locke played for. And it says offensive lineman, but when I, you know you look at his tape, you see him playing at right tackle a bit, sometimes right guard. So I would say they signed this guy to probably either be a depth player for right tackle or try to have a three-way competition between Shad Wheeler, George, and Paul himself. Now, uh, he's not one of the guys I like per se, but I did like the pickup in terms of, yo, we just got more offensive line depth. And in my opinion, you could never have too many offensive linemen. So another thing I like about him is that he played against top competition in Missouri and he blocked for one of the best quarterbacks in this year's past draft, well now it's the past draft, in Drew Locke. He did a pretty good job of it too. So I like that they're looking at guys that were sort of either overlooked or for some reason flew under the radar and I think he's a good pickup. Now there's another one of my favorite, this is probably my, the one I'm happiest about, Jonathan Hillman running back out of Rutgers. Y'all might be wondering, why did you want a running back? Uh, the reason is because I don't want Saquon Barkley to be ran into the ground this season. We're definitely heading to more of a run first team if we already haven't been there yet. And Saquon's only a sophomore. I don't want him to start running him running him into the ground yet. Especially if we don't know yet, but especially if this season might just turn out to be a really rebuilding season where it's like we're not really trying to win anything. We're just going to rebuild for the year after because I still think 2020 is a Giants year. But I like Tillman for that reason, and then, oh man, you go and you look at this dude's stats, man. You look at his stats and you look at his tape. It's fantastic. Before I go into the stats, because the tape is what I fell in love with. This guy, he has a little bit of Saquon in him. I mean, he knows how to hit the holes when they're open, and he's literally running through some tackles and spinning out of tackles. It literally took on a good couple amount of runs. You know, I might put in the tape, I might not, because... Uh, I've been getting copyright claims on videos that do have tape, so I'm not sure yet, but just check it out. He's like running through tackles, spinning out of tackles. It takes like two to three dudes to bring him down. 
he looks amazing. He looks like a mini Shifty, you know? He looks like a, like a mini LaShawn McCoy. He has a bit of power to him. Some nice amount of speed. I'm excited to have him on the team because I definitely think that he could take some of the hard hits that Saquon doesn't necessarily have to take. And Hillman has a good size to him. He's six foot flat, 225 pounds. And I say a little bit of Saquon because not only does he have that sort of elusiveness to him and he does have a good bit of strength, it's because he could catch the ball too. So he could be a great backup running back that could come in. You don't really have to change his scheme all that much for him because he has good hands. Now, in terms of his college career, he actually transferred from Boston College to Rutgers. And he does have a better career, it's clear to see, at Boston College than he did at Rutgers. Maybe that's because the scheme fit was better for him or he had a better O-line or something. But I, I don't know, whatever the reason is, uh, I still like that we got him. I thought that he would be someone that went in the 6th or 7th round of the draft. Obviously not, I'm happy that we got him. Next up is Jake Carlock, cornerback out of uh, LIU. Is that Long Island University? Let me check this out real quick. Oh, it is. That's pretty cool. I actually went to high school uh, not far away from LIU. That's pretty cool. Anyway, but um, once again, uh, building up the defensive back core, it looks, it almost looks like they're doing a complete makeover, which um, I like, but I'm at the same time I'm kind of worried about. Like, there's definitely guys I want to keep. I want to keep Grant Haley. I want to keep Sam Beal because we still haven't seen him play. We don't know what we got out of him, and I do want to keep Jenkins for another year. If we ended up trading him, uh, I'm gonna be sad. Like, I am gonna be sad. He's been a Giants, for, a Giants player for three years now, but. If we trade him for like an amazing right tackle or something, I'm, I'm not gonna be as sad as if we, you know, we just let him walk. But it looks like they're either just trying to get as much competition as possible for the defensive back position, or they're trying to make it over. Uh, then we got Alex Wesley, wide receiver out of Northern Colorado. Once again, building up the wide receiver depth. I have no problem with it, didn't really check him out. CJ Conrad, tight end out of Kentucky. This was a guy that I liked. He reminds me, in terms of the Giants player comparison, a little bit like Rhett Ellison. He has a good pass blocking technique and good run blocking technique. He could catch the ball also. And um, I think that he actually has a chance of replacing Rhett Ellison. And it's not like that's anything big. I do think Ellison is an underrated player, but he still is a backup. I, I would not be surprised if CJ Conrad does end up replacing Ellison, whether it's this year or next year, because as good as Ellison is, he is a bit overpaid. He's one of our bigger contracts, believe it or not. So if we could get uh, somebody to replace him and we don't notice that he's gone, and obviously for a very cheap price, I got no problem with it. Then is Jeremiah Harris, linebacker out of Eastern Michigan. Another linebacker pickup. And I like these linebacker pickups because I was expecting us, um, with the way we were going, we were going a lot of defense, I was expecting us to take more than just one linebacker. So I like these two guys, um, Bo Josiah and Jeremiah. Hopefully he could create some healthy competition and really tell our starters they need to play better. I mean, specifically at inside linebacker, I was only impressed with Alec Ogletree this season. And you could argue that he still underperformed given what we gave up to get him. You know what I mean? He had, yeah, he had the six interceptions and whatnot. I mean, I don't know. I think he could have just been better in, uh, which is surprising to say because he has six interceptions. I think he could have been better in coverage over running backs and tight ends. And I definitely think he could have been better in stopping the run. Our run defense after we lost Snacks was obviously bad. But it just went from like average to one of the worst in the league. So hopefully these guys could uh, sort of set some fire under the starters. Or maybe even become future starters. It's not a surprise. We've seen it before. Then it's Mark McLaurin, safety out of Mississippi State. And Brecklin Hager, defensive lineman out of Texas. Now Brecklin Hager, Breck, Brecklin. Oh my guy, my bad guys. It's not Brecklin, it's Brecklin Hager. And I might be butchering the name, but y'all know who I'm talking about. So, so let me tell you about this guy. Hager is a guy I really like because he has great technique, great like fundamental skills, and he has production to show it, but not for this past season. See, now, he was projected to go in the 5th or 6th round, maybe late 7th, but, you know, obviously, he went undrafted. And the reason he was projected to go there is because of this just weird drop-off. Um, he had a career-high 6 sacks and 13 and a half tackles for loss in 2016 as a sophomore. 2017 similar stats, but then I'm looking at, of course, uh, 
for you guys that are interested, I'm looking at the 24-7 Sports Texas Hook'em Horns uh, website right now. And according to them, both because of a scheme change, a coaching staff change, and an injury, his production dropped off to just two and a half sacks and 7.5 tackles for loss. So I mean, it, mm. injury, of course, that's that's the more important thing here that uh, teams would have probably been scared away from. And then there's the uh, change in coaching and scheme. Now I would like a guy to adapt to a change in coaching and scheme. They changed to a four technique, where he played a um, he played on the defensive line instead of playing as his usual defensive end in the three technique. So I mean, for us, that's good. Obviously, we do run the three technique. But uh, I am worried about his uh, shoulder injury. Hopefully he can recover and hopefully he can uh, add some good depth to our line because our defensive end spots, in my opinion, are kind of filled right now with um, DJ Hill on one side and then maybe uh, Dalvin Thompson because uh, since we got uh, since we got Dexter Lawrence with the 17th overall pick, I'm pretty sure he's gonna take over that no side of spot. And I've seen Dalvin Thompson on Instagram, on Twitter, trying to slim down. He said he wants to get more sacks, so I guess he's gonna try and take up that other defensive end spot. So I mean, as of right now, that's the undrafted free agents we got. Uh, I like it. I mean, it's not really anything I don't like. It's undrafted free agents. They cost literally nothing when you look at the cap space that we have. Um, I like that they picked up a couple O linemen. Uh, good depth. I like that they picked up a couple of wide receivers. Good depth. More, more often than not, as we see here with the draft.